Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series. In this training sessions, we are going to learn Fiori elements. This training completes end-to-end -end Fiori application development using both CDS-based annotations and also the front-end Fiori annotations using Fiori annotation XML development. We will be utilizing SAP Business Application Studio in BTP and also VS Code for developing our Fiori Elements application. This training includes all sorts of Fiori Elements, which includes list report, object page, overview pages, and analytic list page application development. Together with that, I will show you how to extend a standard Fiori app delivered by SAP, which are of type Fiori Elements. We will also see the extension points in the generated Fiori application through the annotation inside the system so let's get started this episode we will focus the persona the developer persona and understand who is doing what in a project when it comes to fury element and we will also see the comparison between cds based annotation versus the old the annotations which are used at the level of fury applications this was a another question asked by many of you anubhav can you compare and tell me how it is different to build Fury app using CDS annotations and how it is done when it comes to uh, the, the annotations which we keep directly in the application. What's the major difference, the major drawbacks and advantages of using which approach, what is the recommended approach. So let's get started today's episode. So first thing what we're going to look here is we will go ahead and talk about uh, the developer persona as well. So now let's understand the developer persona when it comes to building Fury elements. What is the developer persona? Who does what in a company when it comes to building Fury applications or using Fury elements, of course. So let's meet our developer, Simon. Simon is a S4 HANA technical consultant, a ABAP developer who got trained at anubautrainings.com on ABAP on HANA. Simon has expertise on building ABAP code, reports, RICEFs, function modules, classes, and very good expertise on object-oriented ABAP. Recently, he completed our S4 HANA come ABAP on HANA training on our platform, and now he's equipped with the knowledge of CDS views. He's also planning to take our ABAP on cloud training, where he will learn Fiori annotations and also the RESTful application programming in system. Now, if you look at Simon, what he will do, he will use the so-called ABAP development tool on Eclipse, and he will then code CDS views. Basically, he will build CDS views and O data services, but together with that, he will also build a special file called metadata extension, MDE. If you notice, it is written in the black color, which is what indicates is its speciality. So to build Fury elements, we need annotations. And all the annotations to build such Fury apps will be written in this metadata extension. In today's class, I will probably show you this flavor of building the Fury elements. In coming lessons, we will learn how to build the annotations directly on the front end. So with that, let me make you meet our second developer in the team, Ruxana. She is a UX developer, UX designer, and a Fury developer. She has just completed my UI5 and Fury foundation training, and she is equipped with the knowledge of web development, JavaScript, and Node.js. She is also currently taking my Fury advanced training, where I'm going to teach her Fury elements, end-to-end -end development of Fury elements using front-end annotations. So what Ruxana does, she will be utilizing the tool like VS Code in her local computer, including the topics which we learned in the previous classes like VS Code installation, setup, UI5 tooling, basics of Node.js, how to utilize latest Fury tooling, and the complete UI5 YAML concept to build applications which are either freestyle or Fury elements locally using extension pack in VS Code or she will use Business Application Studio tool to develop her applications. Today she is here and her goal is to build Fury Elements application. So for that, 
she will be creating a fury elements project using standard template given by sap and if you pay attention again in the black color i have noted down annotations.xml this is the file which will eventually contain all the annotations which are going to drive the functionality for the fury element application eventually this fury app will get connected through the odata with my complete backend development and what you get at the end of it you will get a complete end to end ready to use product standardized low tco fury application to delight your end user anubhav anubhav is a happy user who is mesmerized to see the experience of the fury app he can run this application on any device any time this application is deployed on sap btp hence he can access it directly on the cloud from his own cell phone it is secure it is ready and it is enterprise compliant that's a kind of application we are going to build in this course in coming lessons aren't you excited yes i am so let's go ahead and now talk about annotations part this is probably the most interesting questions asked by many many of you in my past trainings including my abap on ana training what is annotations in general the definition and what does it mean if i am an abap on ana consultant or respon ana consultant versus a fury developer pure fury developer have no idea on abap on ana have no idea on cds how can i build fury elements application and what difference does it cause so annotations are additional metadata which are provided and which provide abstract definition of data semantics these abstract definitions are stored in vocabularies from odata and sap so there is odata protocol which is open data protocol from microsoft microsoft provides you vocabularies related to the annotations and sap on top have extended that with sap specific annotations this is basically makes your metadata for the fury ui or so called fury elements ui sap fury elements understand these annotations and generates the ui based on them wow so you don't got to write any code you just have to write annotations and your ui will be ready out of the box and that's the fury elements framework will take care so what is the main difference between cds view based annotations if i am a webonana consultant in my webonana training we learned that and the xml annotation which we are going to focus in this training so if you see cds view based annotations they are coded in abap system as you saw in my developer persona simon is going to code them using add tool in abap system he is an abap on hana consultant he is as for hana consultant that's the persona that's the developer who will do this probably you are not that you are relying on a, another person in your team who will take care of that usually there is a separate back end and separate front end developer but a developer who could do both the work will become a full stack developer hence drive high salaries high salary expectations in the market okay coming back annotations which are coded in abap system like simon do will do it but xml based annotations are coded inside annotations xml file in the fury app cds annotation require experience on abap on hana done by an abap or s4 hana consultant however xml annotations require understanding of xmls in general and the knowledge of annotations which we are going to gain in this training cds annotations follow the life cycle of your o data service and cds views basically they will be transported to quality and production system through abap transport xml annotations however follow the life cycle of your fury app so usually you deploy fury app in abap system with a separate transport frequency and life cycle if you are using a separate front end server so that gives you more flexibility to control your annotations as compared to cds based then due to different release cycles some of the annotations might be available in later release so if you watching some internet tutorial and you're trying to build some cds based annotations in your cds view it is not working maybe because your system is still on lower version because they follow a bap life cycle hence you may not be able to use such annotations until your system is upgraded however when it comes to ui5 if you bootstrap ui5 directly from cdn then you can utilize also the new features including the xml based annotations 
CDS annotations are more suitable if we use frameworks like RAP and BOPF to build end-to-end -end applications in ABAP language with S4HANA. However, if you're using freestyle services using SEGW based services or other frameworks which does not support annotation like in my last BTP training, I've used Java Olingo framework to build our data service. Sometimes we use uh, Node.js or third party frameworks or .NET to create our data services. In that case, you may not get those annotation features from that framework. So still you need annotations to build Fiori elements. In that case, you will go with XML based annotations on the Fiori UI uh, in the business application studio. Then project will be coupled with OData built on CDS. Hence, we cannot test the application if service is down. So if you're using CDS based annotation and by chance your backend connectivity get get, uh, you know, loose or, you know, you have a problem in backend system, you will not be able to test your application because all the annotations are coming from backend system. However, if you code annotations on front end and implement the mock server, as I taught you in this training, you will be able to test your application directly independent of OData, even the service is not working. So you can conduct your UI verify test, which we learned. You can conduct your unit test. You can conduct your one page acceptance test, OPA test, which we learned in this training. All of that you can do it with the help of mock server, provided that annotations are put in on the front end directly. Then CDS annotations are easy to code and can be modularized with metadata extension file. When it comes to XML annotation, they are also easy. Yes, and they help with the help of annotation modeler in the extension pack in VS Code or BAS. We will be able to code them pretty easily. The coming to the tool knowledge to build CDS annotations, you have to use ADT tool, ABAP development tool on Eclipse. However, when it comes to XML annotations, you have to use Business Application Studio or VS Code to develop. Coming to the most important question, will there be any performance difference? Answer is no. Whether you use CDS annotations or you use XML annotations, they will not have a performance challenge. You can use both. But I recommend the people who come from UI5 background, have no knowledge on Evaponana, have no knowledge on CDS, go with XML annotation approach, which is going to be our main learning in this training. If you're willing to learn CDS based annotations, I will cover basics today, but I will not go in detail. You can join my S4 HANA training where we covered this topic in detail to build different types of applications using CDS annotations. So now let's get started and we will build our first application. So our first control or first, um, you know, application which we're going to build using Fury elements is going to be a list report application. If you pay attention carefully, we have different components of a list report application, which we're going to pay attention. The first component here you see is called variant management, which allows you to save variants into backend system. If you enter some data here, you want to retrieve the same data next time. Yes, then you can create a variant out there. The second section which you see is called filter bar, which consists of multiple fields, including a generic search field and a go button. Using adapt filter button, you can add remove fields into the filter bar. The third section which comes is the table toolbar, which gives variety of options for performing custom actions and also features like personalization, sorting and Excel export of data. Finally, the fourth section is our table. This table can be fully customized as grid table or responsive table, which we can do it quite easily using Business Application Studio. So in this table, you will have multiple columns which are also created in the system. So this is all in all called your list report application, which is predominantly used to display the data and search the data, provides an entry point for the user to look at the data in the table control. This is more or less like a report. And then when you click on one of the list item, which will navigate you to an object page. An object page consists of different sections, displaying you particularly the context data the data which you selected on the last screen will be displayed on the next screen it composed of the header section this is your header section which has a title description additional properties and actions then just below that 
you have facet sections. These are called facets. A facets is like a tab of a tab strip in classical GUI based application. These are called facets. So if they're given a fancy name to these things. I could call them as a tab strip, but they're given a fancy name called facets. A facet is responsive and eventually the facet can contain your content. So I have two facets, one and two here. My first facet is composed of a field group. So you see here, I have three field group, general, prices, and dates. This field group, why they're called field group? Because they contain group of fields. And you see here, we have group of fields inside each field group. So you can have multiple field groups inside your facets. Finally, we have the second facet, which is showing a table eventually in the system. So this is how the structure of a list report application on this planet, no matter what data you present, be it sales order, purchase order, service contract, accounting document, anything, it will eventually look like this. It is a same homogeneous, consistent user experience. Yes, there are two facets in this application at the moment. Yes, we will build it, don't worry. You will understand it much better once I build it each and every component which I'm depicting here we will be developing it in the system live in action. So first let's understand how we utilize the ABAP stack to develop such an app but slowly eventually I will come out of ABAP and I will show you purely you can develop this entire application through front-end XML based annotations. Yes so this is how we can build basic CDS based annotations and this is how we can build basic application using list which is a list report application in the system so eventually we don't like to do this this way maybe i will show you building also object page in the next class and then finally we will do it like a fury developer pure fury developer uh, here you are depending on a abap consultant is a cds view developer but this is how people are also building apps you saw the both techniques but eventually our goal is to build application using front end annotations using completely XML based annotation, which probably will start in our next class. So that's the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed first class on Fury Elements. You understand the basics. You understand what is Fury Elements, uh, why it is important, how we typically can build it, who does what, what is my responsibility and creating our first Fury application on the framework which we built. It's okay if you don't know ABAP, it's okay if you don't know CDS. Soon we will start Fury annotations which are based on XML and that from there onwards, you guys should focus those who are prim primarily focusing only on the front end development. You're not working as a back end development. Any questions before we close today's class?